This is going to be the first of five in-depth tutorial segments and is meant to serve as a guide for those wishing to see a detailed explanation of each and every component of the Radon Report Manager. In other words, this video is going to be long and it's going to be comprehensive. It's also going to be a tad bit informal. I have my coffee with me and plan on taking plenty of sips in between my ramblings. On the other hand, if you just want to see a basic overview of the software and learn how to create a radon test record in a little less than 15 minutes, it may be best to watch the Radon Report Manager introduction video that came bundled with your software, starting at version 3.4.0. If you need detailed installation instructions for the software, that introduction video should also be able to help you out. So, without further ado, let's start with the tutorial of the setup section. The setup window is where you'll want to go after the installation is complete. For the purposes of this tutorial, we'll be starting with a blank database, so let's start off by clicking on the Setup button from the main menu. Now we'll find ourselves in the Setup window, and you should notice seven tabs near the top. The leftmost tab, and the one that we're currently in, is the Company Info tab. This is where we'll start, and also where we'll define our company's information. I'll do this quickly entering in our fictitious company's name, address, city, state, and zip. The manufacturer certification field at the bottom is for companies that have taken Radilex becoming proficient with EPERM course and have been certified by Radilex after completing the course exam and successfully performing a spiking test. By default, the display company header box is also checked and this will allow your company's information to be displayed on your various reports. If you don't want your company to appear on your reports then you can uncheck this box but we'll leave it checked for now. And that pretty much sums up the company info tab. If you later change addresses, phone numbers, or whatever you can head back to this tab and change your information. Now we're ready to continue onwards so let's click on the defaults tab. Uh, with the exception of state-specific templates, which we'll get to in a minute, everything in this tab represents the default values that will automatically be selected for you when creating a new test record. This means that they should be your most commonly used values, but they can still easily be changed for a specific record. Starting with the Measurement Units drop-down box, uh, this will allow you to select between U.S. Imperial style units, uh, such as feet for elevation, picocuries per liter for radon concentrations, and micro Rontgens per hour for gamma values. Uh, note that selecting U.S. Imperial units will also change dates to be displayed in the month-slash-day-slash-year format. If you select the SI International System of Units, on the other hand, elevation will be calculated in meters, radon concentrations in becquerels per cubic meter, and gamma values in nanograys per hour. The dates will also be displayed in day slash month slash year formats for SI units. If you do change the measurement units, you will be asked to reconfirm the elevation uh, in your new units, either feet or meters. The radon report manager will automatically correct for differences in elevation, which is important when dealing with electrets but in order to do that, it needs to know the elevation of a given test site location. But for here, just choose the elevation that you think is going to be the most commonly used value. Continuing onwards, the measurement protocol should simply represent your most commonly used method of deployment, either singles or duplicates. If you deploy singles the majority of the time, then select single. If you deploy duplicates for extra precision, then select duplicate. On a fresh database, the gamma drop-down box will read MV for measured value, which allows you to define your specific default gamma. If you'd rather, you can select either a U.S. state or Canadian province, where you'll be doing the majority of your tests in order to calculate gamma at the average U.S. EPA, or whatever the Canadian equivalent thereof is, values. The config drop-down box is the device type that you'll be using most often during your tests. Uh, by default, this is set to SST, 
or a short-term electret in an S-chamber. But if you'd prefer to have another device set as your go-to default, this is where you change it. For the purpose of this tutorial, we'll keep it at SST. Next up is the equilibrium ratio. This is the assumed value of the radon decay products that have not plated out and are still in the air. By default, this is set at 0.5 or 50%, but you can change this to whatever value you want. And I think the US EPA recommends values of like 0.4 or 0.5. Uh, for comparison, a value of 1.0 or 100% would indicate that none of the radon decay products have plated out and are still in the air. A value of 0.0, .0 or 0%, would indicate that all of the radon decay products have plated out and are not contributing to the radon concentration. Uh, you can change the default here if you know what the exact equilibrium ratio of your area is, but for this tutorial, I'll keep it at its default value of 0.5. Our last stop in the required info defaults is the default reader dropdown box. But, because we haven't added any readers to our inventory yet, uh, there's no way for us to change this at the time being. Uh, besides, we can set our default readers in the inventory window as well. Moving over to the gray box, the test site defaults, we'll be presented with two options. The test site type will allow us to choose between residential or commercial tests. If you find yourself doing one more than the other, you can select it as your default here. If your company does both residential and commercial tests in about an even ratio, uh, then you should leave this at no default. We'll be doing residential tests for this tutorial, so I'm going to select residential. Our location default will also allow us to choose a default location, which is the most common place where we'll be deploying our radon detectors. I'm going to go ahead and select basement for my default, but feel free to choose a different location if you use it more often. Uh, up until this point, it's worth reiterating that all of the information we've entered has just been default values. This means that we can change them for any individual record if a certain field doesn't match what we've selected here. The defaults are just meant to make your life easier, so you don't have to repeatedly select the same value over and over again. But now we'll move down to the blue box, which has the state-specific templates. The basic template should more than suffice for most users, but certain states will have rather unique reporting values. Selecting one of the states listed below will overhaul the Radon Report Manager to suit your specific state's needs. And this value can only be changed here from within the setup window. But all of the records, regardless of their state-specific template, are cross-compatible with one another, so you can head back here and change the template whenever you want. So if you try out Illinois' template, create a handful of records, and then later decide to try out Kansas, you can head here and swap between the two seamlessly. Right now we only have four states in addition to the basic template, but we'll be adding more in the future. And that pretty much sums up the defaults tab. So let's head over to the next tab in our list entitled Techs. It's here where we can manage our team of technicians. Let's start off by adding a technician named Adam Smith. We'll type in the NRPP as his certifying organization, his initials, certification number, the date when his certification is due, and whether or not he is allowed to deploy, retrieve, and analyze detectors. As he'll be the only technician that we'll be using, uh, let's make sure that he can perform all of our tasks for us. The last field, exposure time, is the default amount of time that it will take Adam to deploy or retrieve a test. Let's set it to 15 minutes. Again, this is only the default, or most commonly used value, so we'll be able to change it for any given test if it takes Adam a bit more time to complete his deployment or retrieval. Now we'll set up Adam as our default go-to guy for all of our deployments, retrievals, and analyses here below. This is so we won't have to select him each and every time whenever we make a new record. Lastly, it's also possible to delete technicians, so let's do this once. 
even though this feature won't be used very often. It lays the groundwork for deleting customers and inventory from our database further down the road. In other words, you delete the same way. So, let's add in a temporary technician. Call her Adama Smith and fill out a few credentials. We can now delete her by left clicking on the record selector and pressing the delete key on our keyboard. Uh, we'll receive a pop-up warning asking us if we're positive we want to delete her and we'll say yes. See you later, Adama. And now we're done here. Let's move over to the letter report text tab. The text boxes here are what will be displayed on your customer letters, but you are free to modify them to your liking. Although the default text should be good enough for most users, the Radon Report Manager gives you the ability to define up to two different presets. It's better to use the presets if you wish to create your own customized letters because reverting to the default text will always restore it to its initial values, i.e. the ones that you see right here, right now. So I'll create a preset quickly uh, so that we can use it on our future reports. I'll simplify the texts 1A through 1C, which are used for short-term CRM and long-term tests, respectively, and then copy text 2 from the default text over to my preset. And that's about it when it comes to the letter report text tabs. Uh, just remember that any changes you make to the default text will be lost if you click on any of the presets or if you reload the default text by clicking on its button. Uh, having said that, it's probably best to use one of the presets for creating your customized letters rather than trying to modify the default. Okay, after finishing up here, let's move over to the Reminders tab. The Radon Report Manager is initially set up to provide you with a wide range of reminders. Now let's go over what they actually do. At the top, we have our reader calibration. If this is checked, the Radon Report Manager will warn you if your reader calibration is nearing its due date or is already past due. The same holds true for the Reference Electret Annual Recertification, which is normally done at the same time as a reader calibration. Next on the list is the Reference Electret Weekly Reading checkbox. If this is checked, you will be reminded when you're supposed to take your weekly reference readings. The NRPP NRSB State Certification checkbox will remind you if one of your technician's certifications is nearing its expiration date or has already expired. Uh, you get about a one month heads up before the certification actually expires, so you'll have enough time, hopefully, to fulfill your continuing education requirements and whatever other bureaucratic hoops you got to jump through in order to get recertified. The Technician Exposure Checkbox, if enabled, will warn you when one of your technicians is approaching the annual exposure limit of four working level months. This warning will first appear when a given technician has accumulated 3.9 WLMs and will also let you know if a technician has exceeded four working level months so that you can be sure to remove him or her from the field. Uh, further down the list, we have spike and field blank reminders. Spikes should comprise 3% of your total annual measurements, with a minimum of 3 per year and a maximum of 6 per month. Field blanks should comprise around 5% of your total deployments. If these boxes remain checked, then the Radon Report Manager will warn you when it's time to do either a spiking test or deploy a field blank. The counter to the right of both these checkboxes will let you know how many detectors you've deployed since your last spike or field blank, uh, so you can see how long it's been. Our final two checkboxes, Use the Test Assistant and Load Last Site Automatically, are mutually exclusive to one another. So that means one, or none, but not both, should be selected. Uh, the test assistant is a new feature that will help you create new records and track down existing ones. It's great for new users, but it may slow down software veterans. The load last site automatically will do exactly what it says. It'll load the last test record that you were using automatically after clicking on the test data button from the main menu. Uh, if you don't do that many radon tests, 
and don't have more than one deployed at any given time, then this option may be the best one for you. We'll leave the test assistant enabled for now, but you can always unselect it later on if you decide that you don't need it. Moving onwards to the pricing info tab, we'll define our default prices, terms, and service. Like most of the other fields, these just represent our most commonly used values. We'll set the price at 100 bucks, the terms for due on receipt, and rather non-creatively define our services as a radon test. And that's it for this tab. Finally, we'll arrive at the last of our tabs here in the setup window, the database tab. We can do a bunch of important stuff here, so let's start with the most invaluable of these features, the export database button. By clicking on this button, we can export or back up our database. The database gets backed up to your installation folder in a subdirectory called backups. It's really important to try and back up your database at least once a week, and then, to be even more responsible, to copy it to an external source, such as a flash drive. This will help ensure that your database is never lost due to catastrophic hardware failure, such as a dead hard drive. Even though your database may not be that important to you at the beginning, eventually it's going to have hundreds and hundreds of records, encompassing years of radon testing so you'll want to back it up as often as is possible. When you receive a newer version of the Radon Report Manager, you'll want to export your database so that you can properly import it into the newer version. If you accidentally uninstall or reinstall the Radon Report Manager without exporting your data first, it will be lost. And there's nothing that we at Radilac are going to be able to do to help you recover your data. So, on risk of beating a dead horse, it's a really good idea to back up your database using the export database button. Uh, moving down, you can also import an existing database into the Radon Report Manager. You can use this to import your database after upgrading your software or perhaps even transferring your data to a different computer. Moving downwards again, we arrive at the Erase Database button. Clicking on this button will allow you to erase your current database but only after jumping through two warning text boxes asking you if you are absolutely positive that you want to delete all of your information. Because I want to keep the current information for the rest of this tutorial, I'm not going to erase it right now. Lastly, we'll see an Export to Excel button on this tab. This will export all of your data to a spreadsheet, which will be useful when reporting to the various state agencies. For example, if you're in Pennsylvania, your records will automatically be exported in a spreadsheet tab that the PADEP requires. Basically, uh, this feature is meant to make complying with state agencies as easy as possible for you. And that pretty much wraps up the setup window. We've defined our new company, set up our defaults, added a technician, tinkered around with the letter report text and created our own preset, reviewed the various reminders, created our default pricing information, and even exported our database. On the second portion of the tutorial, we'll take an in-depth look at managing our inventory from within the Radon Report Manager.